What goes around comes around. And what's coming around now is a resurgent liberalism that aims to accommodate Christianity to contemporary society and the moral revolution that's virtually swept Western civilization into its camp. The moral revolution has its ideological roots in the Enlightenment, but it surged out of its hothouse of the academic elite, where it gained a hegemony until it emerged in the 1960s to become a pervasive social movement. Moving co-tangent with the radicals of the moral and sexual revolution of the 60s was a resurgent interest in Christianity that breathed new life into a moribund church. The Jesus People Movement was a genuine revival that renewed thousands of churches and birthed new fellowships that stripped the church of empty rituals in favor of a deeply held faith in Jesus as personal Savior. One of the marks of this resurgent evangelicalism was a return to the Reformation belief of sola scriptura, that scripture is God's inspired and inerrant word, sufficient for faith and practice. But the Jesus People Movement, which fueled a resurgent evangelicalism, was just one stream in Western culture, a minor one at that. While it did exert some influence during the following few decades, the liberal enlightenment culture as embodied in the moral revolution carried on apace, moving the wider culture ever further from the Judeo-Christian worldview. By the dawn of the 21st century, secular humanism had co-opted the culture of Europe and North America, leaving evangelicals in a kind of intellectual ghetto. A decade later, a triumphant secular humanism has turned on that ghetto with vehemence to eradicate it. In a kind of intellectual urban renewal project, it's targeted conservative Christianity for demolition and remodeling after its own image. Secular humanism fancies itself tolerant and enlightened. It professes to allow room for religious groups, so long as they give allegiance to secularism's values. The idea is, hey, believe what you will, so long as your behavior aligns with our social agenda. This presents a problem for Christians desiring to remain faithful to biblical and historical Christianity. Central to our faith is an abhorrence of hypocrisy, of claiming to believe something while living as though we don't. Ideas have consequences or they can't be considered as personally held beliefs. Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, but do not do what I say? If you love me, keep my commandments. And yet today, an accelerating number of one-time conservative Christians are renouncing that label to align with a liberal faith less antagonistic to secularism. They've accommodated themselves to the world by accepting the agenda for the moral revolution. They call themselves progressive. Ignorant of history, they think that they're bringing the Christian faith in line with the findings of science and the enlightened morality of the modern era. They don't realize that they have in reality ignored the work of some of the church's most brilliant minds, theologians of the church's earliest age who contended with many of the same issues they now want to surrender on. The moral revolution of modern secularism is reminiscent of the debauchery and brutality of the first century Greco-Roman world. Christianity was appealing to many pagans precisely because it offered an attractive alternative to the immoral cesspool that was pagan Rome. A recent blog post by an author named Chris Kratzer, who identifies himself as a progressive Christian, illustrates the several errors this movement makes fatal errors if we take scripture seriously. I'm going to put a link to the article in the notes titled, I'm Sorry, Conservative Christianity. I just can't do it anymore. Kratzer lists the problems that he has with what he calls conservative Christianity. Now, I would argue that what he identifies is less true of biblical Christianity as it is of a cultural evangelicalism, which has touch points with a biblically consistent faith, but it is not to be equated with it. Because we need to keep these short takes to the five minutes that I've set for them so that they are, you know, short, I need to break this up into several episodes. All of them will be titled Regressive Christianity. Next time, we're going to dive into Kratzer's list of problems that he has with so-called conservative Christianity. <laughs> 